Welcome back. I just had dinner, so... And my brain might not be the best at the moment. But I am really curious to continue. That green connector thing wasn't over here, right? No, and I don't think we have any line of sight to the... One on the tower. Alright, let's get out of here. Anything on the compass in this direction? Does it look like... Oh, oh, there's a question mark over there somewhere. Well, let's walk along... And, yeah, walk around along the shoreline. See if we can't find any more of those... Uh... Leftover human debris. 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 However you want to say it. Last episode at the ending, we were talking about our main priority being to find Athena, but I thought our main priority was just to... assess the risk factor of this place. It was like priorities are shifting. <laughs> the the Somnodrone, something that's interesting. Yep, this just seems like beautiful wilderness. Almost campground material, maybe. Although I would not recommend it. Like, look how much stuff there is on the fourth floor here. Like, a campfire, you'd have to clear out a lot of space and... I mean, it is snowy, but still, you don't want to start a forest fire. Those need to happen naturally. Or, in controlled circumstances, by professionals, not from some random camper. is a lovely game. I technically think I could turn up my graphic settings a bit higher, make things a little bit prettier, but I don't mind keeping them all the way down just to make sure that there's no performance issues with the recording and such. Here we go, this is something that's not on the compass. Our core! Oh, is this where the question mark is? Oh, I had to take damage to get that one. that? How do I get up on top of this? Ooh, so we, if we smuggle an item out of a puzzle, or find an item laying around, bring it here, and get ourselves a flame, I'm presuming. Unless it's a star. I can never tell them apart. Alright, well, how do I get up on this? I'm gonna go all the way around this until I can get up there. That's not the way. Aha, maybe this is the way. Ah yes, stairs. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I would have tried this eventually. <laughs> what the? Excuse me? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit wonky. Like, sinking into the ground a bit. Okay. I would definitely fall if I tried to jump down that far. I'll come back for you. Hey, don't collect it before I do. <laughs> Here we go. Start collected. Paradise cannot be found. It must be built. Makes sense to me. Poisonous humility. Exerted from orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton. But what we suffer from day to day is humility in the wrong place. Modesty has moved from the organ of ambition. Modesty has settled upon the organ of conviction, where it was never meant to be. A man was meant to be doubtful about himself, but undoubting about the truth. This has been exactly reversed. Nowadays, the part of a man that a man does assert is exactly the part that ought to not assert himself. Sorry, that he ought to not assert himself. The part he doubts is exactly the part he ought not to doubt, the divine reason. Huxley preached a humility content to learn from nature. A humility content to learn from nature. But the new skeptic is so humble... Skeptic, sorry. The new skeptic is so humble that he doubts if he can even learn. Thus, we should be wrong if we had said hastily that there is no humility typical of our time. The truth is that there is a real humility typical of our time. But it so happens that it is practically a more poisonous humility than the wildest prostrations of the ascetic. I don't know how to pronounce all of these words. <laughs> the old humility was a spur that prevented a man from stopping, not a nail in his boot that prevented him from going on. For the old humility made a man doubtful about his efforts, which might make him work harder. But the new humility makes a man doubtful about his aims, which will make him stop working altogether. I had to read this twice to fully understand it. Yeah. This is a tricky one. And it's unclear to what degree I agree with it or not. It also could be very specific to a time period. I don't know when exactly this is from or when this was written. Like, it might not even still be relevant or... Well, I mean, it's included in the game. It probably is relevant still. But the time period it's from would help in understanding its context. Excursion Report 3 From Miranda to Athena It's incredible. There's an entire submerged town just off the coast, surprisingly well preserved. Sailing over it, I finally understood what the ancients meant by eerie. I obviously couldn't have the kind of physiological response they did, but I think the mental response was pretty close. A contradictory response. Part melancholy, part fascination. It's strange how tragedy and destruction make the beauty of civilization more obvious. P.S. A deer got into the maintenance area and made a huge mess. Sorry, I'll clean it. P.P.S. I may have been feeding it. <laughs> That's... Not the way I would describe the word eerie, personally. 
I mean, it, I guess that is one way the word could be used, but it's not the one that normally comes to mind for me. Wait, what was this one called? Funding 6. My pettiest journal number 6. My pettiest journal is only one... The, oh, founding, probably. The founding of New Jerusalem. Day 296. Cornelius and Serabhai went back to the dam today. We've been holding off on constructing any new humans to concentrate on building a home for them first. But there's a limit to what 13 people can do on their own, and everyone is eager to start construction of some of the more ambitious structures. Serabhai's kindness and patience is something that we'll certainly miss out here, where tempers can sometimes run high. And I'll miss Cornelius too. He was there when I was born, and he's just as much a father to me as Athena and Alexandrinian are my mothers. But I suppose I can always go visit them. The dam isn't that far, and once we complete the monorail in a few decades, it'll truly only be a few minutes away. And what are a couple dozen years, really, when you might live forever? Something I really like about Alex, one of the reasons why I'm here doing this, is that she's really humble. She has this incredibly positive view of humanity. She believes we can accomplish anything, but it's not about her. She doesn't think that she's smarter or better than anyone else. She just looks at us as a species, and even though she can see how small we are in the grand scheme of things, she thinks that we could conquer the stars and give meaning to the universe. Even now, even when none of us are going to live to see it. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I'm glad I checked over here. That knows us here. What is freedom? Is it merely to be ruled by those who speak one's language or share one's customs? No, that is merely a more convenient servitude. Is it to have no obligations, no loyalties? No, that is not to be free, but to be alone. What a freedom from hunger and thirst. Here, we are closer to the truth. For freedom requires life. But one may have all the meat and all the wine in the world and still not be free. The most important freedom of all is the freedom to speak one's mind, to make one's thoughts public without fear, and so participate openly and boldly in democracy. It is the freedom of the dissenter and the gadfly, the rebel and the fool, that is the true measure of whether a city is free. Wow, that did not age well. <laughs> if only things were that simple. This is question mark. So I'm guessing this is another triangle puzzle. Let's do it. Yeah, change to a triangle. Where's the... Oh, here it is. There's the sign. As a tradition, let's walk around the edges. This isn't one I've done already, is it? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, this is definitely not one I've done before. Interesting. Um... Hello? What are you supposed to be doing here? <laughs> uh, I think this is misplaced. If I had to guess. <laughs> yeah, it's probably supposed to be like these. Alright, let's head into the puzzle. Oh, and this one's just floating. <laughs> Not sure if this is because of my graphic settings, or... You know, it could be one of those things where you only see it on low graphic settings and not at the higher graphic settings, because they just forgot to check on the lower graphic settings. Oh, okay. Eh. 
interesting. There's our ultimate goal there. Uh, I guess we need a jammer up there because I don't see anything to deactivate that. There's a red laser there. Which would activate that, I presume. Yeah. I wonder... We want the whole punch out here. Looks like we might be able to aim up the, above the barrier from back here. Ourselves a connector now. That does about what I expected it to. Hmm. Yeah, that does work. We need the fan active as a thing. already established that, uh, when you put an item on those, they delete all the connections. Like, if I do this in advance, then yeah. Interesting I can right-click on that as well. What happens if I right-click? Oops. Right-click, right-click. It does not keep the connection, so yeah, if you put an item on those pedestals, it completely clears out all connections. I'm gonna put the jammer up there for now. Ooh, that's the problem. Let's put this here. Because we'll need it for bootstrap purposes. Ah, that'll work. Right, but we need the fan, which... Ooh. Yeah, how am I supposed to do this exactly? I don't have enough items. Unless there's something I'm missing. No? I think that's everything. And I can't take this fan off. Yeah, that one's permanent. Bring an item to swap. So is... Paradox. Oh! I am massively overcomplicating this. There we go! <laughs> now it makes sense. There we go. Oh wow, that was that easy. Yeah, I really overcomplicated this one. Um, 
think I can see anything to point a laser at from here. Oh no, well, we have a checkpoint at least. Oh. I actually thought that that would reset me. Okay. There is a question mark in this direction on the compass. did that. Already did that. What's this question mark way over here, though? Maybe it's another terminal? Or a lab? Yep, it's a lab. Once again, foggy. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be this way. I don't think this is the kind of mess a deer would make. Puzzles. By Alcatraz. What did puzzles represent to the Founder? Whatever they may mean to us in our culture, what did they mean to her? We have no record of her speaking positively about puzzles. She certainly never expressed any interest in solving more of them. So what if to her, they weren't trials to overcome or challenges to enjoy, but a trap she had to escape? Wasn't all she wanted at the end to stop solving puzzles and start living a free life in the real world? I think it's more complicated than that. Collapsed lab. One of the Founder's labs seems to have collapsed. I guess that shows that even the Founder has limits. There is no human building that can survive without maintenance. Robots are stronger than concrete. Unless she destroyed it on purpose, of course. But it seems like the ceiling just came down. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the puzzle clusters on the island correspond to the presence of labs. Except the lab near our base camp, which doesn't have any puzzles attached to it, although it does have other strange structures surrounding it. Are the puzzles guiding us to the labs, or are we just finding the labs by accident? My farming obsession. So I've been playing a ton of this old Gehenna game called Ancient Human Farmer. The title says it all, it's sort of a simple farming simulator. Maybe not the most sophisticated game, but I'm getting really obsessed with it. I'm having some sort of emotional response to it that I can't exactly explain. Like it makes me happy, but also sad. Does anyone have any idea why this is happening to me? The game appeals to you because of the human needs commune with nature, to live a lifestyle that's not about dominating the world but coexisting with it. You're sad because we can't ever return to being who we used to be thousands of years ago, but happy because it reminds you that at least something similar is still possible for us. Wow, that is a beautiful response, but absolutely not at all what I was gonna say. Like, I was just gonna say it's just how Skinner boxes work. <laughs> that's, that's like, happy and sad is the typical response for Skinner boxes. Maybe it's because the people of Gehenna, despite their imprisonment, had an innocent view of the world that's permanently lost to us. I think it's actually the opposite of what Oba is saying. These games are enjoyable because they take us back to a time when we still had agency, when we could build things, grow things. When we could impose our will on the world instead of being completely powerless and inactive. What you crave is the ability to contribute to humanity in real, material ways. You're sad because just simulating it is not enough. You don't want to farm, you want to be a pioneer as we humans are born to be. It's just a game, don't overthink it. Yeah, I'm just gonna say the Schooner Box. Uh, but that's not one of my options here. I have to agree with one of these viewpoints. 
Except I don't agree with any of these viewpoints. Like, none of these viewpoints are ones that I agree with right now. <laughs> Alright, we've done the two lost puzzles. And we've got one of the two stars, and we know how to get the other one. Vaguely, at least. So how about we start getting started on the... Oh yeah, we did the lab. So how about we start getting started on the, uh... Actual puzzles, I suppose. Well, I guess one, we don't need to fix the transport system next anyway, because we'll be going to the... the megastructure. And I gotta remember, I gotta break... gotta break an item out of a puzzle. For that one flame that we found. Uh, let's see. Where is the nearest sign to tell me where to go? Here we go. This direction. Interesting. That's eight. Wow. I'm quite a ways away from the first one. I think that's it right there. Oh wait, no, this is... Oh... We're just too away from... Well... Maybe we still need to fill this as well, but maybe the left side of the door will open? Or... Maybe we need all of it. And yeah, this is where we came in. Those birds flew right by me. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Wait, what was this called? Superstition? Substitution. It's that easy. Gotcha. That looks kind of like the connectors, doesn't it? Yeah. Stand on this, but it won't let me jump. Yeah, it's not letting me jump. I can jump here, but not off of this. How strange. It's also not letting me jump on this either. Did you, you saw that, right? The jammer was pointing in completely the wrong direction at first. Huh. Alright, two is in that direction. One moment, please. Alright, onward.
From Yarnus. To Athena. Beloved founder, I beg you to return to us. We cannot achieve the goal without you. Uh, but we did. <laughs> you are the one who defied Elohim, who overcame the trials of the simulation. What are we before that? How can we possibly find a path that will not lead to the mistakes of the past? You are our sole link to the wisdom of the progenitor. Without you, we are lost. Praise be your name, Yarnith. Human Construction Excerpted from What's Wrong With The World by G.K. Chesterton uh, This is a guy that... Yeah, that was the one that we couldn't decide whether to agree or disagree and that Miranda needed multiple read-throughs of. Our modern prophetic idealism is narrow because it has undergone a persistent process of elimination. We must ask for new things because we are not allowed to ask for old things. The whole position is based on this idea that we have got all the good that can be got out of the ideas of the past. But we have not got all the good out of them, perhaps at this moment, not any of the good out of them. And the need here is a need of complete freedom for restoration as well as revolution. There is one metaphor of which the moderns are very fond. They're always saying you can't put the clock back. The simple and obvious answer is you can. A clock, being a piece of human construction, can be restored by the human finger to any figure or hour. In the same way society, being a piece of human construction, can be reconstructed upon any plan that has ever existed. Athena, you can indeed turn the clock back, but if it stops ticking, it's dead. I'm pretty certain I do not agree with whatever it is Chesterton has said here, or at least it's not relevant anymore. Like, this, this seems like one of those things that's just absurd to think that this is how things are. Like, maybe people around him are saying stuff like this? Him or her? I don't know the author's gender. But like, in my experience, this isn't a problem at all. <laughs> Black Snow. From selected archive documents. The coal mine finally brought decent jobs. It lifted us up from poverty, made us proud. We weren't just ordinary workers, we were the lords of the underworld. And with our skills, we kept the whole country alive. I thought I saw something in the real world behind the screen here. Maybe a deer ran past or something, or some birds. The mine- oh, there's something else over here as well. The mine also brought back- The mine also brought black lung, gruesome injuries, and death. And when it went away, it brought the collapse of our entire society. As for the plant, I know it brought electrical- sorry, electricity and even more jabs. But I know what a difference that made in people's lives. I also know that when we used to go out and play, there were black flakes in the snow. Why did they just switch to a safer technology once they realized coal was dangerous? Says Miranda. And I'm assuming it says Athena. Because who else would be talking to Miranda? They didn't always have a choice. Sometimes coal was all they had, or were allowed to have. And the alternative was poverty. At other times, they wanted to switch, but there were powerful interests that prevented change. We can't blame people for the world they were born into. Yep, it's all a big interconnected mess. Yep, it is a deer. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Excuse me? Uh, how? Uh, Tree, please explain to me how do you exist? <laughs> this does not make any sense to me. Interesting, a little bit of green and a bunch of brown. Possibilities. Oh, you're just giving me that for free? They made these walls high, so I can't take this out of here. Uh... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> uh... 
Oh! I was in the fan, apparently. Just... slowly moving into it from the platform. Okay, then. What happens if we put it in here now? Does it discharge? No, it doesn't discharge. Interesting. Uh-huh. That's all we needed to do. Do we have line of sight? Wandering Is that it? These I think so. Solving puzzles... In a way, 1K's experience must be very similar to Athena's in a simulation. There's one difference, though. Athena was alone. Such good music. Which one is that? Because I want to. I want to go do that one first. Oh, frogs. Okay. I thought it would be too cold for frogs here. This one might not have a good angle. Let's try this one. If it doesn't have red in it, then we'll know for sure it's not the right one. Seems pretty likely. Just based on the geometry. Twice. got red in it. And would you look at that? We can easily aim at it. this. For now, let's go back and do that one. Mother, can I suggest something? Of course, go ahead. The southern part of the island is completely dead. No animals, no plants. The soil is too alkaline for anything to live except bacteria. Yes, that's why it's a good location for some of the experiments. Well, if we want to show that we can make the cosmos more beautiful, then why don't we start there? The desert doesn't have to be dead. If we modify the conditions, life can thrive there. And that could be the first step towards spreading life to other worlds. What do you think? I think that sounds like a plan. Maybe. Wall. Oh, just barely, maybe. Oh, oh, hmm. Hmm... 
well. Not this one, anyway. I'll, I'll keep it here for reference, being able to see where that is. Wait, where did I come from? How did I get in here? Excuse me? Huh? Oh, I bet this was... okay. That must have been like that originally. Yeah. And we don't need the jammer right now because it doesn't have line of sight on anything. Yeah, we can't move this over here because that would lose line of... No, maybe it won't. Yeah, that works. This box will help, for sure. We can't get it in there. We'd have to use the wall there. Give me this. Okay, now this should work. There we go. Did it! False idols are worshipped not because they are idols, but because they are false. True idols are rejected because the truth is feared. Alright. Now. I guess our goal is to put the box in there, but I need to keep this back in there as well. Uh. Can I do that? Is the question. That should work. I am glad that works. Alright. Right, I can't put the box in there right now. Um... But, I can trade out the jammer... Maybe. Right? Now what? I have the box in here. Do I just need to do this again? I think so. Oops. Uh... Yeah, that works. Did it! I like those platforms that make you trade like that. It's a nice way to condense puzzles that would otherwise be really more complicated than you need to be. And it allows for more puzzles that would otherwise be too difficult to create or yeah. More puzzle variety. I like it. Oh, this one's really high up. Oh. Really? Is it gonna be... such... We're gonna have such an ordeal in there that it's gonna be easier to come out this way than to try and go back the way we came. I suppose so.
prison. Is this the prison, or am I going to prison myself? Oh, hello. What is this about? Oh, we get all three boxes, and we can climb over the wall. I see. They have red and blue. And I guess we need the boxes to accomplish that. Which makes sense. Oh, this can be opened from blue as well. Interesting. What happens if I do this? Will it let me? Right, that's not gonna work though. <laughs> oh, I might have just made a terrible mistake. I can still save this. <laughs> huh. Okay, well obviously I need a box at first here. Now I can bootstrap... Uh... Yes, okay. Take this inside, and we're going to prison! We're in prison, everybody! <laughs> Jailbreak! Alright, now what? I guess I'm gonna jump back over with the connector, right? And start this whole process all over again from the beginning? Sounds about right. Yep. Now we have lots of collectors and connectors. Right. Let me put that one in a better position. Oops. There we go, that's better. And let's trade one of these for a box. this off. Right, right, this can bootstrap. Forgot. Why they added this extra I don't exit think here? About how many cities there are out there under the ocean? Cities where people lived for thousands of years. Cities with their own history, their own culture. All of it lost under the waves. If they'd been less greedy, they could have kept all that. I don't think we can pass moral judgment on an entire species based on the decisions of a handful of leaders. But I do think they made a mistake. They stopped caring about what they built. They stopped seeing the romance of civilization.
Okay, that's our ultimate goal there. Hmm. I mean, we've already got this charged. Do I need to put this back from whence it came? I suppose I do. We learned that these stay charged when you put them in here. Which is nice. They just lose all their connections. Back from whence it came. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. No, not yet. Not yet. Whoopsie. That's not what I intended to do. That one, please. There you go. That should be sufficient. Now... Oh, that opens both. Right, that simplifies things. There we go. Let's just do this, actually. Uh, right, I need to put this one inside. And then trade these out. And I think we're done now. Right. New interface content available. The Devil's Bargain. From Theophilus of Adana to Dr. Faustus, from Marlowe to Gioth, there's a story that the ancients kept telling. A wise man tempted by the devil to sell his soul in exchange for knowledge with terrible consequences. I've long wondered why they thought this story so important, and I'd be curious to hear what others think. The ancient writers knew that knowledge is dangerous and its pursuit often leads to tragedy. Knowledge is dangerous for those who want to hoard power. These stories are designed to keep ordinary people compliant. And yet, in a lot of the stories that I've read, the writer seems fascinated with the devil's side of the argument. Oh ho ho Uh, wow. This one had to actually be made as smaller text because it's so much. Her options are Damien's right, it's to keep people compliant. Malduk is right, knowledge often leads to tragedy. I think they often conflated political anxieties with technological or intellectual progress because talking about the real problems was taboo. Knowledge can be extremely disruptive to society, they were grappling with that. The pursuit of knowledge comes at a cost, but without it, the world is boring and deep down, those writers knew it. I knew that. It's a pseudo-profound story that writers re reused because it made their work look deeper than it was. Lots of interesting options here. Hmm. There is... some... forbidden knowledge, such as how to create nuclear bombs. Like, that's the kind of knowledge that should not be shared. Like... But I think most knowledge is not in that category. And usually in those stories, that the knowledge you try to gain isn't that. <laughs> like, I kind of agree with this. Not something I agree with here. This one I also kind of agree with. Uh, this is also kind of true. Uh, not sure I agree with this one. 
Yeah, that's also a possibility here. Ooh, I don't know what to pick. Tell you what, I will think about it between episodes. I will see you then.